My name is Brady Byram from Mesquite, Texas, and I'm the lead material witness in Robert Fox's uh, criminal case. Um, uh, when he um, uh, started getting charged by the city of Jacksonville um, individuals, um, um, I became interested in, the, in um, uh, digging into who these people were. Um, the Jacksonville police, or the people who claim to be Jacksonville police, um, uh, seem to be filing uh, false charges on Robert. And so uh, I have about 20 years experience in asking cities for information from them in Public Information Act requests. And, um, and so I asked the city of Jacksonville uh, to produce for me um, the officer's um, oath of office. Um, also their, their city charter says that uh, departments will be created by ordinance. So I asked for the ordinance that created the uh, Jacksonville Police Department. Uh, asked for uh, the mayor, and city council, and uh, city manager's oath of office as well. And, and not just their oath of office, but their statement of officer and their um, certificates of appointment or election, as the case may be, however they uh, gained their office. And the um, city secretary returned to me um, 91 pages of, of documents. And um, so what I did was uh, I very thoroughly and methodically analyzed those 91 documents. And I came to the deduction very clearly, and I can take anybody through this, that there are no police officers, there's no legitimate police officers in Jacksonville, Texas. Um, there's no police department. Uh, they could not find in the history of Jacksonville where they, where the city council had ever created the department, uh, even though their charter says all departments are created by ordinance. Um, this is not the only city in, in uh, Texas that has had this um, situation. Uh, city of Mesquite, Garland, Richardson, Dallas, a number of, of uh, large cities have never created the police departments to begin with. Balt Springs, by the way, uh, just below Mesquite, just south of Mesquite, did in fact create the department. It says so right in their, uh, in their ordinance rolls. And if you challenge the legitimacy of a Balt Springs police officer, they point directly to that ordinance to prove their legitimacy. So I'll say that to contrast uh, what happened in Jacksonville. In analyzing their O's, uh, where one person would um, uh, perform the oath for the chief of police or for the um, um, municipal judges, um, um, the individual who, who does that, who performs that oath, is required to be in the list, according to Texas law, that can administer the oaths. And if that person is illegitimate, then nothing that they do is legitimate. So basically I started with the officers and I worked backwards and it, it finally culminated back at the city secretary. She's been there for a, a couple of decades and um, she has never had an oath of office. And at the time of, of my, uh, in, in three previous raids with a total of eight false charges and his claim against them was for the, the damages that they caused him. Now the Texas Tort Claims Act requires that if a person wants to file a claim or a, a, a lawsuit against a city, they have to file a claim first to notify the city that they're, that they're planning or intending on filing a lawsuit later. And that gives the city time, opportunity, and notice to do one of three things. Pay the claim, pay less than the claim if they don't believe that the, the amount that's claimed uh, should be paid, or pay nothing. But the Texas Tort Claims Act is there um, to give the cities uh, an opportunity to respond prior to um, a lawsuit. If a person doesn't file a claim and they just file a lawsuit, uh, the cities get an automatic easy dismissal because they didn't file a claim first. Um, and so Robert filed his claim against the city on an absolute guaranteed win because they filed a, the fake Jacksonville police officers filed a criminal charge against him that in, in no way possible could be committed by him. The statute clearly states that Barratree 
is applied to lawyers and only lawyers. And, and the lawyers are the only ones that can commit baritry. And as such, Robert Fox not being a lawyer, it would be impossible for him to commit baritry. Therefore, when they filed the felony charge of baritry against Robert, they were filing a false charge. Well, when um, the district attorney refused to prosecute on that, the um, um, damages that had occurred prior to that against Robert is the damages that he um, stated in his claim. And so instead what the city of Jacksonville did, what the fake police did, was to file yet another false charge against Robert. This is the ninth false charge against him. And that one is tampering with the government record. And their twisted line of thinking is this. Um, they say that somewhere in that claim there's a falsehood, but they won't pin down and, and say what's false. They just say the document's false. And since he filed it into public record, it became a government record. And therefore, they say you put those two halves together and he's therefore filed a false government record. Tampering with the government record is their deduction. When in fact, the Texas Tort Claims Act requires that Robert file a claim to be able to sue later. So this is their new policy, and um, I suspect that, that ultimately it's going to lead to uh, police officers being killed in the streets. I hope not. I hope that's not the case, but I'm, I'm afraid that's probably what's going to start happening because now, where, whereas formerly um, the people had an avenue of recourse to corrupt cops and, and false charges, now this is the beginning of a policy created by three people, uh, a, a fake Jacksonville police officer, the district attorney uh, uh, Elmer Beckworth, a DWI convict by the way, and um, Dwight Pfeiffer. Um, and so the fake officer, um, the district attorney Beckworth and Dwight Pfeiffer have created a policy now here in Texas, not a law, they created a policy whereby they can, they can do anything they want to to anybody at any time and trump up, trump up any charge they want. And if you defeat and win the charge and file a claim against the city, they now know that they can, they can file a new charge of tampering with a government record against you and get rid of you, just like they're trying to do with Robert Fox. So as a result of what I tried to file, um, and, and he stripped this out of the record and, um, and would not let the, the jury see, they wouldn't, he wouldn't allow them to read my 66-page affidavit. He would not allow me to read this affidavit into the record in front of the jury. And he also refused to let them review the 91 uh, documents um, that, that the city of Jacksonville gave to me. I prepared a criminal complaint against um, the... Um, judge in the case, Judge Dwight Pfeiffer, and I made a second entry as lead material witness and outlined the four specific um, violations of due process that Dwight Pfeiffer committed against Robert Fox. Um, I have filed this criminal complaint in over 10 state and federal agencies and nobody will do anything to him. Now, um, I know that if I were to arrest him under um, a citizen's arrest, which we are allowed to do in Texas for felonies, and I have accused him of felonies, I know that these very same people would have me arrested for false arrest. I know that. Others know that. And so I'm not going to go there. I've got a family to support. and. Um, and so I'm not going to uh, make a citizen's arrest on Dwight Pfeiffer. Um, I was hoping that uh, someone somewhere uh, would, would um, see uh, the depth of the corruption that Dwight Pfeiffer has done against Robert Fox and Elmer Beckworth because uh, a lot of the things that, that were done against Robert uh, by the judge was uh, because Dwight, uh, I'm sorry, because Elmer Beckworth asked um, Judge Pfeiffer to, uh, to do so. And so um, the two of them together, um, Beckworth and Pfeiffer, are, uh, they're in their uh, little East Texas cartel and they won't uh, stop doing what they're doing. 
So, um, um, once I found out that the charges were, were moving ahead, I notified a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 13 appeals court justices um, that Robert had been um, falsely convicted and I included yet another set of this criminal complaint uh, to each of those justices and they refused to uh, intervene. That is, all of the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals and the 12th Court of Appeals um, in, uh, in East Texas, um, based out of Tyler. And so, um, not only have I discovered and, and stepped forward um, uh, with facts and evidence that clearly shows um, that Robert is an innocent man uh, charged yet with another false charge, but the criminal complaint is ignored and even uh, the appeals courts uh, refuse to allow in a, um, a visiting judge to, um, um, to at least bring some justice in East Texas. Um, there was a point, uh, the, the, one of the, uh, I think four of the eight charges were, of the original eight charges, were drug charges against Robert. And um, he was the housekeeper for uh, a business um, for a, uh, a friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours. And um, when uh, it was finally disclosed to the visiting judge who had been asked to come out um, that these were expired antibiotics left over from a dental office, um, he dismissed those charges against Robert. And, and that proves to us that the East Texas cartel, uh, they stay lockstep with each other. They protect each other's rear ends. They uh, um, block and hinder uh, exposure, and, um, and, and it takes outsiders coming in, and uh, that's what happened, in, in, at least in the early stages. Um, the, the first set of uh, criminal charges against Robert were dismissed, and, uh, and that's why he filed his claim. You, you, in Texas, you have to, uh, to be able to even gain the window of opportunity to uh, uh, to file and win a, a lawsuit against a city for their, for their uh, false or malicious prosecution or that type of thing, you have to win the cases. And so when Robert won those cases, when those cases were dismissed in his favor by the visiting judge, uh, it opened the door for him to file a claim. And, uh, and I don't want to see the, the time coming when we can't file a claim against a city without fear of a new felony charge called tampering with a government record. Um, this policy had better be reversed. It better be reversed from the top down. It better come down from the Texas Supreme Court. They'd better clamp down on this because if they don't, the people are going to rise up.